I mean, let's get Super Beats done. My friend, before we get into a very long-winded, probably piss everybody off diatribe. Perfect. Might as well. Might as well. Uh, go to GetSuperBeats.com. Use my promo code Bubba. That's G-E-T, Super B-E-E-T-S dot com. Promo code Bubba. That's going to get you. You can double your potential with Super Beat Art che- uh, Chews. Free 30-day supply plus 15% off your first order when you use my promo code at GetSuperBeats.com. Promo code Bubba. Super Beats is the number one pharmacy re- re- pharmacist recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. It's blood pressure that you can support and trust. Even negative Brian Matroni steals, and he probably does it as by design, but he steals Dr. Dan's uh, Get Super Beat Heart Shoes, and Dan gets mad as hell. Mad as hell. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants and Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting no- normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. Over 30,000 re- five-star reviews and counting. Again, Get Super B E E T S. Get Superbeats.com. Promo code Bubba. Okay, so let's uh, let's get into this here a little bit. Completely and getting exonerated. He wasn't even like like on. he didn't do it, but it completely. Already, yeah, I no, wasn't sure. I wasn't did, sure if you're you playing did, the video or no, not. You messed it up. I was like I was double tracking. Okay. And you messed up, cousin. But it wasn't just what you said. Shut up. Sorry. Everybody's got some bullcrap ass excuse when the principal yells at you. Just take it. I'm taking it. That's the difference. I do in today's elementary schools, do you think the kids talk back to the teacher? Oh yeah. Like back in the day, man, when you if you're like in in, in school and a teacher would be like, Clem, uh, can you shut your mouth up a little bit and quit being kind of disruptive and uh, you know you'd be like, Yes. But then under your breath you'd be like wah, wah, wah. Well now under the breath you can say yeah, yeah well, you know. Now they're just like, "F you, bitch!" Yeah, I'm out of here. I quit. My dad's worth a zillion bucks. I can pay off people. I can. I know people. They can blow in phone calls and things like that. <clears throat> so, Brian, as you know, um, this this particular situation uh, is happening in my life. You you knew about it, and um, yeah. Here here is the video, and. I'm going to play the video. This will probably be one of the last times that I play it that you have to sit through it. So if Chad could just be, just give me a little bit of a chicken's mental and uh, what, what's the three things that Marshawn needs to take care of? Oh. You take care of your chickens, you got to take care of mentals, and you got to take care of your yeah, this is, people or something? No, this no, is no. kind of like your therapy to get through this, right? Yeah. So I, I understand yeah, that. It, it, I really, get it. it really is. I have nobody else to talk to about this. You know, I really don't. I can't talk to Tom Bean about this or Brian. You guys would just be mean to me about it. It's not being mean. It's it's it's. I care about you, Bubba, and I don't want to see I'm, you take care of your mental. mentals, your bodies, and your chickens. Yeah, well, my body's. I mean, that's that, that's a wonderland. Yeah. Well, no, it's a wonder. Look at I, that, man. No, my body is not oh, like anything we should be worried about. Oh, like Clempic. that's too far. That was, oh, that's too far gone. You still doing that? But How many me- pounds down are you? I, I I'm in the I'm in the seventies. So two seventies. Yeah, the three. I'm in the three seventies. <laughs> 370s. So, my mentals and my chickens, I just need to be able to, like, I just, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's me. I know it's because of you, Bubba. It's all your fault. And you just, just, just deal with it. This radio personality, Mike Calta, has just ran rackshaw. Like, he just, you're his bitch. He, I mean, he took the sex tape, he got it distributed, got away with it, took your job, and he's untouchable. He can do whatever he wants. And to me, I don't know of anybody else from an athlete to a politician to other people that can roll around like this. Oh, there's politicians that roll around like this. Okay. I, I don't For know. Sure. Let me just tell you this, Brian. Let me let, let me mic, let me let me micro segment a little bit more. I don't know of any other radio personalities or or media personalities or journalists that can roll around like this and have done the things and been part of the things that he's done and continues to get a pass. I don't. I, I don't know. And the fact that the local news media has not covered this at all is is really atrocious. So, so again, doesn't that lead back to like kind of my frustration? Like, my lord! So here's the tape, and then Brian, I want you to actually go through when you know because I, I had this idea. I'm like, hey, let's take the tape 
And since the state attorney came back last Friday with a no, we're not filing any charges on Mike Calta. He didn't do anything wrong. Uh, She was the aggressor. He was only defending himself to create space. Once I saw that, I'm like, I got this idea. Uh, Since they're saying, and so at at the end of the day, what they're saying is she's the one that committed the crime. I mean, you can only defend yourself against somebody that's attacking you, correct? You know, I mean, you. I'm. I'm just trying to walk through this here, and Brian, you help me. Uh, you know, please help me get through this. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, because you know the law better than me. But I mean, you can really only defend yourself by the definition of defending yourself and pushing somebody away from you if they're intending to attack you. Well, let, let me let me be clear on this. Their memo and their justification is a joke, which is why it doesn't make sense. It occurs right. in this so, video. So hold on. Let's let's watch this video, and you. And I'm so gl- I'm so happy that you read th- that you read their report, so you can really you truly know that when I paraphrase by saying that she attacked him, he defended himself, and to create distance, you know that I've paraphrased. But that language is in their report. It's a, it's essentially what what their report was right. Based their on. whole I mean you know their report's three pages, but essentially what they're saying, and and I'm glad that you've read it now. It's just not you don't take my word that the report you've read the report, and essentially what they're saying is this is that it's Erica was the aggressor. She attacked him. She actually, they say, used the word grab, and she never did, grabbed his shirt, and in a, which would not be considered an unlawful way, he defended himself to create space. Am I right? <clears throat> it's what it says. Yeah. Okay, so here it is. Here's he, And so what is so outlandish and so mind-blowing for me, Brian, is that, if there was a little bit of that on this tape, by the way, this tape, the authenticity of this tape is like, oh, Bubba had somebody there. No, this was Caltus people that provided this tape. And you know what? Their defense, as it, when I heard what their defense was, Brian, I laughed. The, the, the records, they, the, the deputies, you got to understand, the, the, the under chiefs, of the state attorney's office, they were gung ho. They were all like, this was an eleventh hour. Somebody blew a phone call deal in Brian. It really was. <clears throat> I mean, like you know, this the all the deputies and all their reports were all recommending strong arm felony battery, invasion of privacy. Um, you know, just there was all these. You know, they you don't have somebody. I don't think Brian. I don't think you have a girl write a letter to the judge as a victim impact statement. And and sign up for Marcy's law if you're not intending to to file charges. So uh, they were filing charges clear up until like what, and they kept stringing her along and stringing her along and stringing her along. And I know Calta was playing his you know Goomba, <clears throat> better call uh, d- Dom. Uh, uh, I I knew that's and and in fact you know we. When Erica was down there speaking to them in person, a couple of the girls were telling telling Erica they were the girls were pulling for her in the office, and she'd been down there a few times and, and requesting records and things like that, and they were all pulling for her. And they're like, "Hey, just to let you know, uh, his attorney has been down here three times this week. Like they his his attorney and the and the amount of phone calls we're getting." Uh, for people that are calling on his behalf is unbelievable. So Brian, she the, there is a girl at the that kind of gives her that news. Listen, there is a lot of activity on this, and Calta, the, Mike Mike Calta has a ton of important people that are calling people. So at that point, I'm like, I'm telling you right now, we're screwed. We're absolutely screwed. And so Brian, because they come up with such an outlandish, you know, reason why they don't charge. And it and, and and if and if if their reasoning kinda if there was a little bit of that in this video, I would even be I I'd, I couldn't be nearly as just un, uh, unhinged as I am about this. If this if this video wasn't if you don't give this to nine to one hundred state attorneys and and any other place if you give this to one hundred state attorneys where Bubba the Love Sponge is not known or heard. And you just know that this is a 45-year-old woman with big jugs that's asking a a public figure in a public space a couple questions, and he invited her to ask, like you know, like it's 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 he's at, if you give this Brian to 150 Democrat 
prosecutors and 50 Republican prosecutors, and you keep my name out of it, and my name and me and, and who I am and what I've done and what I represent and how I'm perceived in this, in this, in this area, you take that out, 100 out of 100 bring charges to him. Would you not agree? It's 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 an, as easy of a case as it comes. You it, you get a pl- you get an instant plea. There's no there's not even going to be a trial on it. It's it's oh, and, and, it's, and, it's and, no and, bubbles, no trouble. And you know, let me tell you, Brian, how in depth that we know about this because the state attorney is telling er- Erica this. Okay, um, listen. First of first of all, Brian, we got so in depth that she was going to cut a deal and no charge. Like she didn't want to press charges on Jovan because this poor guy, when he was a kid or or like had got a he has a felony. He did some stupid stuff as a kid, got charged as an adult at 18, did some time in prison, uh, works for Cox, but he was just doing as he was instructed. He really didn't do anything wrong. He just removed her based on being instructed. But they were going to charge him with a felony, which was going to certainly put him in prison. And so, and then this is what they were telling Erica was going to happen. And then they were like, with Mike Calta, what we're going to do is we'll probably plead, plead him with a felony. That'll immediately get pled down. He's a first-time offender. He's never been arrested for doing anything. So he's a first-time offender. I don't think he qualifies for PTI, but we'll knock it down to a misdemeanor. It'll be a notice to appear. He'll never see a day in court, and he'll be given community service of like 10 hours. And so that was our reasonable expectation. You know what I'm saying? Like, Brian, I wasn't thinking, you know, okay, they're going to go and lock him up, and there's going to be a mug shot, and he's going to spend 45 days in jail. And no, no, no. I, I knew... The, the the state attorney was so I mean we were that they were that transparent and cool to us that Brian I even knew like this was going to be kind of a big nothing burger but they were at least going to charge him and say you know this guy did do like, you can't do this wh- whether you're charging the guy because of who he is but it's more of a look for your community it's what you're it's what you're telling your community was is is of uh, you can do or not I mean right I mean Brian if anybody this in the next, I don't know how many years in Sarasota County, get arrested for taking a girl's cell phone, smashing her in the face, giving her phone back to her after five minutes after you have scrolled through it and deleted it. If anybody gets arrested for that, this it makes this even worse. So, so the bottom line is, Brian, we even knew that it was going to plead down. It wasn't going to be that big of a deal. And then they, they got a phone call and boom. And, and, and Brian, it was even more insulting when you read the police report as to why they justified the no charge. Like it, it literally was like it's if, actually it, it's actually from the state attorney's office. It's not the police report. But I'm sorry, yeah. from, the, from the state attorney from the state attorney's office as to why they didn't charge him almost looks like it was written by Dominic Ferriello. Uh, the way it's written is so slanted and so clearly agenda driven and not factual and based off of what appears on the video. That's what I'm most disappointed in at, at, out of everything is that the, the justification for it is they have to spin it and and slant it in such a way that it's it's not it's farcical. And, and and so this is it from start to finish, and then the reasoning what 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 state law would prohibit or not prohibit this action. We start off, Brian, with her clearly recording him i think that's a safe distance i don't think you're in and let's just try to break this down again i know you guys have heard this at nauseum but this is my last hurrah and you know what more importantly i got a text from the merch crick and she she's going she has to go to the doc she's going to the doctor right now she and she told me and i never ever do like i never read messages from her or give a message from her or i i, I very rarely you know, like, you know, I try to keep her private. Like, and I try to keep my I mean, private life e- private. Even though she does merch and, and she, she's <clears throat> kind of part of the show. I don't make, I don't call her. I don't put her on the air, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so she did ask me, though, to say this. She, like, she's, she says, I can't listen to the rest of the show, but can you please say something for me? Which is very rare because she knows how I'm wired. I would never, like I would say normally... <laughs> 
Hannah, you could you could imitate me if if normally she would no, ask me. Erica, are what you, the hell are you thinking? I'm on the air, you know that unless it's emergency, like if Tyler got his face cut off, do not get a hold of me. I mean, if so Jake, back in order. If Jake, yeah, alone. there's belt buckles to be filled. Leave me alone. You can talk to me right off there. <laughs> you know, Bartle. Please say that I'm extremely upset that not only did the state attorney's office not file charges, but Cox has done nothing. Please let me please let people know that I was a victim and now and victim shaming me because of my involvement with you is completely wrong. There is no justification for his actions. That's what they're doing. They are victim shaming her because of her association with me when I wasn't there and I, and I, I completely stayed out of it. Brian, for the seven or eight weeks that they investigated this, I didn't say a word. Let me, I put my phone call, I put my yep. phones on hold. Yes. <clears throat> so that I wouldn't have people ask me about this because I wanted to, I wanted justice to be completely served without any of my involvement. So let's start out here, Brian, <clears throat> by your legal opinion. Is that a safe distance to be publicly recording somebody? Absolutely. And it's further. Uh, supported by that because the entire time that she's was interacting with him prior to this, she was at that distance. So he had no issue with the distance at which she was recording throughout the entire, uh, um, the entire questioning me- meeting questioning and until you, and, this and, moment. And let me ask you, uh, let me tell you this, Brian, I got for until she uh, had him stuck where, uh, he couldn't answer a question. Or he stuck himself. Yeah. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was talking about him physically against the wall. <laughs> Poor guy, could he almost jammed himself against the wall? Mm-hmm. I checked that wall. I was no, Screw but you know, and what you don't, and what people don't see, but I might because she has a copy of it, and I may just, I may just start, I may just start playing it now that you know he's going to keep his job, uh, and uh, this is not a problem. And Ed Dr- Ed Brosky, the twelfth, uh, the you the the department of the floor, the state Florida state attorney of the twelfth circuit has said this is okay. I have video, Brian, of when she first walked in the store and said, Mike Kelta, Mike Kelta. And he says to the security guard, tackle her. And he, but he's kidding. And he goes, no, 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 let her come up. Let her come up. And she comes up and he says, come here, pumpkin. Come here, pumpkin. And, he, and she said she almost puked. He actually gives her a hug and calls her pumpkin and says, what can I do for you? And that's when she starts asking her questions. You didn't even know about that video, do you? Who? I don't think you. You. Uh, you. you. Oh, I'm I'm aware. Okay, and and so, I I I'm aware of pretty much everything from this. Okay, so this shows that was after after he's already hugged her and called her pumpkin two times. Now we're kind of at this point. Her first question she asked, he owned her because she poor little thing doesn't know this stuff. She, she, he owned her. He's like, uh, uh-uh. uh, and and she could have really, she didn't, she just, she just didn't know the material. Had she knew the material, you could have just absolutely killed him. But she, she just got, and she was nervous. The poor little thing was nervous, and she's shaking. And, he's, and she, he, and she just had to endure a hug by him, a guy that looks like well, uh, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Count to wine. Does he, Brian? Does he not have Weinstein features? Yeah, he's got those sleepy, droopy eyes. Yeah. And- so. First, so after he owns her, the narcissistic pig that he is, he makes her turn the phone around on herself and say, yeah, uh, Mike's Mike's right on that one. He got me. He made her do that. Like what what other per- media personality when they're being interviewed, if they get if they get the person that ask the questions, makes them turn the camera around on them and admit like talk about. You, you, you might hate do that. women. You might do that. Okay, hold on. I might do that, but have I ever done it? Is there any is there any recording of me doing that? No. You can say I might do that, but I haven't done it, so you can't really say I might do it. There's no record to date of me doing that during an interview. So you're so narcissistic that you make her turn the camera around, say that she messed up and asked you a bad question. She asked you question two. You didn't like that question. You just didn't like it. That question flipped you out. Now, now the reason why their report is flawed, Brian, is because they completely didn't even consider all of that. 
the fact that he granted this interview all along and that the fact that, you know, what they're ruling on from the snatch on back was the second question. They'd already been speaking. Yeah, and that's completely excluded from the memo. Right. And, and it is absolutely relevant uh, to the interaction because right. without that context, you could say, well, he has this woman come up to him and shove a camera in his face and start talking. That's not what happened. He no. invited her over. She was at this distance the entire time. He was engaging with her and she was engaging with him civilly. She never cursed or used any aggressive language towards him. And then this video begins. Hold on, and now, the memo now, no, hold on, Brian. And in the course of her questions, she he felt as if he really got one over on her and made her turn the phone around and admit that he got one over on her. Right? That's that's imperative too. I mean, even just to show the further continuance of their conversation. I think just it's it's a little meaning bit... meaning like you know you, you this this story didn't start with her shoving her phone in his face and this is the very first they had a minute or so prior interaction than than where this picks up at right all right so now this picks up and if, if you want to be honest if you want to state state law Florida state law 934-02 public discourse recording somebody speaking openly in a public space is legal as as nobody involved would have the reasonable expectation of privacy that's what this is is that not yeah, she, what she's this is? fully within a right to record within that business <laughs> until she's asked to leave by a the business owner or somebody authorized by the business owner right. to stop. And then at that point, it could be considered trespassing, but you would no, have to go down the proper route. Yeah. Right. So this, what she's doing right here, like a lot of a lot of trolls and on the various threads that you read, but like, you know, you can't record somebody without their permission. Oh, the Twitter lawyers are <laughs> oh, I, yeah. I laugh The Twitter at lawyers are going crazy on this. Oh, be like, first God, of all, they're so stupid. Uh, this is what you see. First of all, she was recording him without his permission. Okay. That's and you, a felony. You just can't put a phone in somebody's face or without their permission. Well, you kind of can as long as it's within safe space and you're in a public arena. You can. It's really, is there any reasonable expectation to privacy? That's 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 the, so the standard you, there. You would say you would agree on that. There's zero expectation of so privacy. Right now, in fact, somebody else is recording him while all this is going on. Right. <clears throat> That's another thing. Well, Bubba, it's all Bubba here. It was a setup. You know, he had a third camera right there. Just a perfect angle. Did you know that this footage was provided by Cox? Because they their argument was she attacked him. And you know what? Oddly enough, it worked. When they submitted this video for the first time, Brian, and the records company, the records division has to tell the victim if there's been new evidence that's been brought in, you know? So they said, you can come get it. She, she brought, um, I watched it and I'm like, this is perfect. This just, this is exactly what happened. Like, lest the Shark Coast tactical surveillance won't that the Shark Coast tactical surveillance that they use won't be nearly as clear as this. It's going to be grainy ass, like you know, above the shoulder kind of footage, right? Maybe not even with words. This is perfect. Like I watched this a thousand times, and never in a million years did I think that a state that a state attorney would come up with. She's the aggressor. He's defending himself, uh, and he was creating space. I'm like, okay, but he took her phone and he deleted messages and he told her to wait outside and he hit her in the face. All right, so here we go. Brian, I we're scoring this and you agree with this. You you this is a I agree. Yeah, it's totally. Okay. Hi. What's pathetic is your life that you're here fighting this fight? <laughs> Honestly, how pathetic. My life is not pathetic. Look, turn around, look at these people. Turn around, turn your camera right, around. Boom. Boom. He Florida state law, strong arm robbery by sudden snatching. Is that, I mean, Brian, is score this. Is that not what this is? It, Stand by, hold on. Boom. It's at a minimum, at a minimum, it's theft. It, it, robbery with by snatching, absolutely. Because, and it becomes that when she says that she wants the phone back and right. refuses to give it to so, her. You would 100% agree with this. Yep. Robbery by strong arm snatching. And again, I, 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 extensively looked into these Florida State statute, Brian's, not just to be able to flash them up and screen. I wanted to make sure that, indeed, that's what this is truly like, 100%. There's no wiggle room that you interpret this any other way under Florida State Statute 812-131-1B, strong-arm robbery by sudden snatching. And what makes it strong-arm is uh, the value of the phone. 
Mike Calta takes woman from her. I mean, it's it. I mean, right? That that, that happened. Okay, now she says you don't have my permission to take that from me. Under Florida State Statute 934-03, the interception of a wire, oral, or electronic communication device is prohibited. Not device. I'm I sorry. see. I don't. I don't f- think that that applies here. I think that no. I, th- I, I think I, that deals with wiretapping. I do not think that that statute applies in this scenario. Okay. Which really, it doesn't really matter. They weren't ever charging right, him with them but, anyway. But I don't think it applies. You don't have permission to come in anymore. All right. Stop this. Denying a victim access to her phone, tampering with a victim's hinder or delay communications with law enforcement. It's, there's, there's a rule, Brian. This is like basically saying keeping your phone away from a person that's trying to dial 911. There's a law uh, that states if you deny a victim access to their phone because you've taken it because they cannot call 911 because you know that her next phone call is going to be 911. Well, you, you make the assumption there. that That's probably a little harder okay. to prove, okay. pro- but because you're assuming that that's what she's going to do next. Uh, he, she did not say, I right. call the police, call the, let me call the police. Okay, I'm so, scoring. So we so far only we only have a strong armed robbery. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying. Only. Oh, only. As, as if that's not something. <laughs> no, but we're going to score. No. We're going to score this out, Brian Wise. And I like this. I I really do like this. And you know what? I probably agree with you. That could have been a little bit of a stretch. Could you charge it? Yes. Would yeah. you get a conviction? Back away, probably not. Back away from me, or I'm going to kick the shiz out of you. Uh, now, under Florida State Section 836-05, verbal threat to do bodily harm. Uh, not just that. That also um, solidifies the robbery, in my in my in my eyes. It solidifies the robbery at that point. Right. So any question over whether or not take the taking of her phone was a robbery is now when he threatens her as she is trying to re- retrieve it with bodily harm, slam dunk robbery, no doubt about right. it. Right, I mean, like, there's no way, I mean, there's... I no mean, way around it. I mean, like, there's no way around it. Because, listen, this is the definition of robbery. The taking of money or other property, which may be the subject of larceny, from the person or custody of another, with intent to either permanently or temporarily... See, this is where the, the memo is a joke. Okay, because they talk about his intent. It doesn't matter if he intended to keep the phone forever. Permanently or temporarily deprive the person or the owner of the money or other property when in the course of the taking there is the use of force, violence, assault, or putting in fear. So even if you say when he snatches it from her that, that that wasn't really the use of force, now... While he's in possession of it, during the course of all this happening, he puts her in fear. He's now placing her in fear. That it's so a you slam can't. Have, it's dunk. a. I mean, it's a. It is a slam dunk. It's a Daryl Dawkins slam dunk, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing the backboard down. Is that what? It's Daryl Dawkins, ain't it's, it? It's, it really is, and I, you cannot score it. Even if you hate me, Brian, you cannot score it any other way, right? That, that's it. Back away from me. Back away from me. Don't back away from me. You've got to go and, and just, just, just language. Well, and that's the thing. If you, if you look I mean, at just, them, just, if Cox, you look at you're, the, you're, Cox, you're, you and your advertisers are okay with this. Why? Because it's my girlfriend. And that's it, the only reason why you're okay with this. Because this is my girlfriend. So when you look at the memo that the state attorney issued there. Uh, this is their description of, of what we've seen to this point already. Um, she had approached Calta as he was seated at a table near the entrance of the business where he was engaging in a promotional appearance. The table was set up in the front corner of the business and was holding radio equipment being used for the appearance. Okay? She accosted, accosted, that means to aggressively approach someone. She didn't accost him. But that's the language they chose to use here, right? To couch it in terms of she is the aggressor. That's a joke, in my opinion. It's it, That is not what happened here, okay? So, and, and hold on. Not only is that a, your opinion, but that's clear as I, day I on think the video. I think it is. Right. She accosted Kalt about a prior civil suit against him and used his uh, and used her cell phone to record the interaction. Kalt asked her, blah, blah, blah. Um, Kalt told her to turn the camera around uh, and people present him. Hernandez told Calta she had not given him permission to take his fo- her phone. 
Uh, whereupon Calta stated she then did not have permission to film him, and he attempted to stop the phone from recording, which he did. He hit the button there right in front of her. Yeah, uh, that's clear. It was not an attempt. He stopped the phone from recording. At that point, he has done what he wanted to do, which was to stop the recording. He has done that. So at that point, the phone should be returned. No further need to keep her property. Hernandez attempted to retrieve her phone by reaching toward Calta. Calta toward her to, told her to back away from him as he would otherwise respond with force. No, that's not what he said. He did not say, if you do not back away, I'm going to have to use force. He said, I'm going to kick the shiz out of you. And then he called her a bitch. Uh, that, is, that is left out of this police memo because it's not, it doesn't support the narrative that they're trying to create, which is she was the aggressor and he was just defending himself. Let's move right along now. <laughs> and you're right. And I mean, you're exact. And the reason why I'm not even saying anything, bud, is because like, drop the like. I don't. I just and and it, and it hurts me to know that a a, a a a supposed to be unbiased judicial system that has equal protections. No matter if you're Bubba the Love Sponge, a black guy, a white girl, a Hispanic girl, uh, a, 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 a transgender person, a homosexual. You have the same rights of protection, don't you? Right. And then, so real quick, because this is another point of it. Hernandez continued to ask for her phone while reaching toward Calta. He continued to tell her to back away from him and that the phone would be returned outside. No, he continued to threaten her is what he did. And that is not in the report. He didn't say he he does at some point says we'll give it to you outside. But they leave out the part where he continues to threaten the use of bodily force against her. And, and I mean, if we're going to say it, kick the shiz out of her. Right. Here we go. Continue on. I mean, I don't think that the report could be any more opposite of what really the of the truth than what it is. Like well, it's, it's it's I mean, it's like it's, it's, it's almost it's like skewed. like like it's almost like let me ask you a question. If somebody from like the Florida Supreme Court that didn't have a dog in this fight, that couldn't get a phone call from. Uh, all of Dominic Ferriolo's, uh, you know, judges and sheriffs and city council mem- and all the people that for 15 years he's been having on his air, greasing. I mean, listen, this, I mean, I, I, I might want to open up a federal investigation on the fact that Ask the Dom has a Wednesday night show that just basically is used to be a political protector of the brand and Mike Calta. So you just march sheriff after politician, after state attorney, after U.S. representative, after U.S. congressman, after U.S. senator, you just march him in because everybody wants to be on the radio and and you and to to be on your show every Wednesday night just to grease, just to so that you so just so that you're so well connected that you can pretty much do anything you want corporately and individually as Mike Calto. That's what's going on here. You're, I, and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Brian, I'm going to go to the state attorney. I'm, I'm going to say, and I want all phone records of all the people that you spoke with concerning the Calta case, all emails. I want to know who, blow the, who blew the phone call in because all the, all the people that were talking to Erica for six weeks were all about fill out victim and state, uh, um, uh, statements and let's let Jovan off so this poor guy doesn't have to go to prison and let's go ahead and uh, proceed with Calta. And when we finally, uh, we might arrest him. If it's a felony, we'll ask him to turn himself in. We'll keep you posted under Marcy's law. Like all of, either you, you were lying the entire time or in the 11th hour, one of Dominic Ferriello's goombas called and i got i got you wouldn't believe uh let me i gotta find this account but this girl posted all of dominic ferriello's guests over the last two years Hmm. every sheriff every state attorney every representative every mayor every police chief everybody has been on that show and brian you know you 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 throw that in being you know having an on air slash you know I interviewed you on the show you have an open invitation to be on the show anytime you want whether you're a judge or you're the sheriff uh, and throw that in uh, with uh, you know can you do can you can you blow in a call for me that stuff happens oh throw in bubble the love button oh throw in that 
Hey, uh, Judge such and such, can you call up uh, your state attorney friend down there in the 12th Circuit? Uh, Papa the Love Sponge's girlfriend, her name's Erica Hernandez. Uh, he sent his girlfriend down there to cause all kinds of problems, and it's just going to be an it's a circus, and we need a no file on it. I mean, Brian, am I am I crazy to say that that stuff doesn't happen? I I, I don't know it for a fact, but I would imagine that it 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 is possible that it happened. In this I so here's what kill, here's what kills me: property of rights, the right to acquire or possess and protect your property. There's actually, as they said, that she grabbed him, and they and she, and she aggressively. They they actually used the word grabbed. She grabbed his shirt. Brian, you read the report. They said she grabbed his shirt. But did you know there's a Florida state statute, you know, that that actually that says you have a re, you, there's a certain a reasonable amount of force that you can that you can apply to get your property back. There's a certain amount of force that you can, you can apply and and do uh, anything short of deadly to get your when somebody has stolen your stuff. And so I want you to watch. And, and certainly she's, I mean, that law would apply to her, would it not, Brian? She has a certain amount of physical presence that she can exert in order to so, get her. So I think the, the, the statute that you're referencing deals with real property. I don't know that that deals with, um, with, with personal property, uh, but I'm not certain on that. I want you to look up Florida State. Yeah, this is a, this is a, this is a got, real I, property hold on, hold right. On, no, I got on. it up. I got it up. Oh, it this is? is a real property bill. So this deals with land. I this doesn't oh, deal with cell phones. I got the the uh, the Florida State statute is um, 776.031. And I want you to go ahead and read that one for me. And then you'll say, yes, Bubba, God dang it, you're right again. Well, that's, but I'm referencing the statute that's, you asked me about the statutes in the video. Yeah, this the that, one, the that's one, the one in the video, the one in the video is incorrect. Yeah, yeah. But 776-031 would be applicable. Have you read that one? Yeah, that one is applicable. A person is justified in using or threatening to use force, except deadly force, against another when, when to the extent that the person reasonably believes that such conduct is necessary to prevent, to terminate the uh, others' trust upon. It's, it's about getting your stuff back. It's personal property, lawfully in his possession or control of another person. So his memory. Yeah. certainly, she's that would apl- would be at this that would apply here, would it not? Correct. And you tell me where she grabs his chest. I mean, she places her hand on his shoulder, and then she, he responds by smashing her in the face. And you would you not agree that is a battery touch or strike? Yes. So we got a. Um, I, I'm not even scoring it. Uh, get prop back, and then we got a battery strike. Right. Mm-hmm. Battery strike. Okay. Boom. And they, the report, Brian, states that this was a defensive move to protect himself and create space. Does that what this looks like? Protect himself from what the what what threat of force or violence did she um, did she say to him at any point in time? She clearly was just trying to retrieve her own phone. So if you stole a lady's purse on the sidewalk and she tried to grab it back, if you want to get space, you can just punch her in the face. Yeah. And in Sarasota you can. So Lummy looks like we're gonna do some purse snatching yep, this weekend, so. okay? Clear space. Now see, I just don't under unless this isn't illegal. This isn't illegal to tell a woman that you just took her phone, that she's trying to get back, that you just smashed in the face, even in a f- defensive type way. I, I get the off me, you C word. Wow. I mean that, but they leave that out of the report. That shows his frame of mind. That shows who is the aggressor, and that's the part that 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 should be in a memo on this. That the language that the people used, what you know they said. This isn't speculation. This isn't uh, hearsay. This is first party account. I mean, this is this is videotape. This is real proof. This is evidence. as real as it gets. There's nothing Hold that's on. been edited. And, and, this and, was and, provided and, and, to you by them, the defendant. Right. This this was provide this video was provided to by Cox. <laughs> deny there is there is a state statute that if you keep somebody's phone and you do, deny them from dialing 911. Now I think it would be safe to assume Brian that she would have called 911 at this point. At this point it may apply. Okay.
Now, now hold on. Get the F off me, and now you can clearly... But the reason why... But hold on, you can clearly see him going through her phone now. Well, that's... And that's and that part is left off. Would you would you believe it? It was left off of the of the state attorney's report that he's now... Because what she what he's doing now is just tr- attempting to destroy her intellectual property. And he did. Hold on. He did. And did you know how they recovered it? The officer was able to show her how to recover it from the cloud. No, he actually did it for her. Yeah. So the, the, the deputy, so that's that's a valid point that he did indeed delete two things because a deputy sheriff is the one that went into the delete deal and re, re-got him for her. So here's the part that I think is funny, though. Her, Hernandez's phone was returned to her outside um, after 10 minutes, and then it said her phone, her video had been deleted but was recovered. But they don't say who deleted it, which we know. We can see him going through her phone and deleting it. Look, 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 look. And he says it again. I mean, oh my God. You've just taken a person's phone and you've, I mean, okay. And now you're going to call her that? Like you did, you, you're the one that did it all. What, what, what am I guilty of? And, and what is she guilty of? What are we realistically by the state of Florida law, by state of Florida law, what am I guilty of? Well, you're not involved in this. Okay, at so, all, but, so but but it's but irrelevant. would you? But no, no, no. I mean, it's relevant it's, to the fact did, did that they, they didn't not did show, they not did they not well, put in a report that there was a third party involved? What, what, it, what's that? In the report, they put that she's been known to be involved with a third party or something. Yeah, I'm in the report. It just says some past. She uh, relayed that she believed Caltech engaged in some past activity involving a third party that she <clears throat> believed was wrong. Okay, so you don't think that they just they went looked into the third party? Well, I, I think that that weighed into, I absolutely believe, you know, I absolutely have the reason to believe that. It's not in the report, though. They don't mention you by name in the report. Right. No, they can't. They're not going to be that dumb. Right. And so, I mean, like again, Brian, the report states that she, the phone was returned and yes, one was deleted, but it was recovered. They, they don't, they come, that's a crime. That's a crime that you're glossing over. You're glossing over. You, you say in your report that her phone was returned. And that there was something deleted, but it was recovered. That is a crime. Right? I mean, it's a crime. Yeah, the crime is the is the attempt to deprive somebody of their property. You don't have to be successful at it to for just because you're a bad criminal. How about no, but how about I mean you're how about not a, a criminal? How about invasion of privacy and going I think there's more here. I think there's I think there's a little bit more here. Hold on, stand by. <laughs> <laughs> Deny, denying a victim to call 911. Yeah, so the reason, the only reason I would disagree with that is then any theft of a phone would, you, you know, if they if they intended that to be, they would they would have that as a separate statute. Okay. All right. Well, Tamper now. Now, would you not have this tampering and deleting of evidence? Potentially, yes, absolutely. Nine, eighteen, thirteen. Now he hasn't been charged with anything yet, so it's questionable as to whether or not he's, he's not going to be charged. Right, they already no. said. Now, let me ask you a question. Do they ever, like, I mean, do they ever, does it, does so the state, does the state attorney ever, real, like, does the state attorney that. ever look at it, like, maybe the main dude, Ed Roski, didn't see this, and he feels as if maybe his underlings who made the decision might have made a mistake? Does it, is there, do state attorneys ever go back and reopen cases well, and look at them? If I'm Erica, I'm, I'm asking for a meeting, a sit down with him personally on this. I, I, I would absolutely ask for that, number one. Number two, as far as tampering with physical evidence, you have to know that a tri- criminal trial proceeding or investigation by a prosecuting attorney law enforcement um, is pending or is about to be instituted. So you can't say for certain that he knew that that was coming. So it's I, I don't know that that would apply to him. Just just from a if you're looking for me straight and shooting you straight by the letter of the law, I don't know that they could get that on him, even though he deleted because he does not know for certain that a criminal investigation is about to be instituted. OK. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, it's been broke down and it looks like we at least got three, maybe four charges. We have at least in every I mean, even by Brian's most stiffest, stringest, stringent con, uh, scoring conditions, you have strong arm robbery, you have f- a physical threat, 
uh, and you have the she has the right to use a certain amount of of force to get her stuff back. Well, that's the defense of her. Yeah, that's not a charge against Calta. No, that's, no, I'm that's saying just, that's just. But they uh, used to, it. But don't know. But they used right. it against her, calling her the uh, the aggressor. Yeah, that just undermines the aggressor. The aggressor thing is is just a, a completely, and it's just not accurate. It's I'm sorry, but it's just not. Yeah, well, you know. I respect and, state attorneys. I respect law enforcement, but I don't agree with this memo at all. The way it was drafted. I mean, you shot how many holes in it? Fifteen, six, seven. Right. Yeah. And, and 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 so I mean, have they ever gone back and say, "Well, man, we we kind of maybe misinterpreted this and got it wrong"? And, and do they go? I mean. Does she have an appellate process? There is no appellate process. Her her only hope is that the state attorney would sit down with her, um, listen, you know, that the main man, uh, listen to what she has to say, and uh, and and change his mind on it. Well, that's I mean, how? Okay, it's not going to happen. Non-scripted and unregulated. Sort of like the same sensation you get after sex. Bubba the Love Sponge. Bubba the Love Sponge show returns after these words. 